Okay, so in this lab we're going to look at two extremely important protocols. In fact, one of them, ARP, the internet really wouldn't exist in the same way it is without that lovely little protocol. So it's ARP that allows us to be able to discover nodes on our network and also the gateway. Without ARP, it would be very difficult for us to do, for us to find out what the MAC address was of any node uh, or the gateway. And it also is there to deliver the data packet on that last little part of the, the journey. So it's an amazing little protocol, but it has many security weaknesses. ICMP is another protocol that we use typically for debug, and we'll have a look at how we use both of them. Okay, so, so let's uh, start, and what we'll do is we'll just open up our trace, and we'll just have a quick look at uh, these traces to see if we can understand our ARP activity. Okay, so in this case, it's a host that's connecting to a web server on the same network. So in this case, there's no need for a gateway and that the host just basically discovers the web server by sending an ARP out for it. So we can see here that the IP address and the MAC address of the server is 192.168.75.132 and its MAC address, because this is the server replying back, this is what its MAC address is, is here. The reason it doesn't go through the gateway is it's because it's on the same subnetwork. The subnet mask will define which network is local to it, and in this case, it was likely that the subnet mask was 255.255.255.0. So our host, our host is here, 192.168.75.1, is on the same network as 192.168.75.132. So a simple ARP for the node is fine. For the next one we'll look at, uh, we're actually communicating with a web server, a remote one. In this case, the user is uh, contacting the Google web server. So in this case, the remote server, as we've found, uh, is here at 91.203.99.45. So the node, our node, 0 0.20, must send out an ARP for the gateway. And the gateway is set up for 192.168.0.1 and tell us. So I can see it replies back with this 00184db0d68c. So this is the MAC address of the gateway and the IP address of the gateway is this. Once it gets that, have a look to see what happens with the destination MAC address. The destination MAC address is the des is the MAC address of the gateway, but it has the destination address of the server. Okay, so can we determine the MAC address of the Google web server? The answer is no. We can't tell. The data packet will get to the very end, but we can't tell what that last part of the communication actually is. So let's look at this trace. And this trace is very interesting. What we see is a, a broadcast being sent out for the whole of the network. And sometimes we actually get a reply. So what this is, is if this was an intruder, is an intruder sending out an ARP scan. So the ARP scan is that uh, they'll actually keep requesting nodes and we can see the intruder is here at 192.168.47.1. So the intruder scans until we get uh, a reply here. Okay, so we can uh, we can actually determine 
uh, reply. In this case, it's a two. And what we're looking for is the opcode. So the ARP ORP code gives us the two nodes which are on the network, 132 and 254. We can see that the intruder has scanned the whole of the network and has discovered those two uh, nodes. Aim of the scan, the aim of the scan is really to determine which computers are actually on. In this case, the intruder hasn't used ICMP because ICMP might be uh, picked up. Is this an insider attack or an outsider? Obviously this is insider because the intruder is able to scan using ARP. If it was bounded by a router, then they could not use ARP to discover the network. And the nodes that the intruder has found is this one and this one. Okay. Okay, so in the step, uh, you start Wireshark and then go to intel.com and then from there you should be able to then determine using ARP so an ARP we were looking for an ARP reply so just this one here Okay, so in this case, uh, the gateway is at uh, 0 0.1 and the node who requested it gets the reply back. Okay, so there is the, there is the MAC address of the gateway and here is the communication that we've got. And we should find that it's um, it should actually happen. So we can look for a TCP dot flag. Okay, so here's all the, the communication that, that we had with the server. So just this one. Okay, so you can see some of the content being transferred then. Okay. So the next thing we'll do is we'll have a look at the ARP cache. So ARP minus A will show us our ARP cache. So we can see on this interface here, these are the dynamically lent addresses. So here's the gateway here, and these are the other nodes that we've communicated with on this network, apart from this one. So the, these are the dynamic ones, and then we also have some static uh, addresses there. Okay, so uh, ask your neighbor what their IP address is, and then you should be able to ping from there. And then have a look at your ARP cache again. We can also put in a static entry. So if we wanted, we could actually set up a static entry in our ARP cache. So let's see if we can do it for our gateway. Uh, so an intruder could change the MAC address of the gateway, so it's sometimes a good idea to actually do this.
Okay, so if we now look at our ARP cache, we can see it's uh, still the same, but uh, we should have, it's now, it's now been added. We'd have to unlearn it and then we could add it as a, as a static entry. Okay, so for the next thing, we'll do a trace route to IBM.com and remember to capture this with your trace. What we'll find is there are there is a common part that we'll have when we do our trace routes, and those common parts are are really the common route that they would take. So it will typically go to a main uh, a main router and then it will actually split depending on where it has to go. Okay, so this shows us our, our lab.